Today's video tutorial is on Google Meets. Google Meets is Google's version for a video conferencing platform. It allows you to meet with students in a video atmosphere and you can either meet with them one-on-one -on -one, or you can meet with them in large groups. Some schools are using it for doing staff meetings. It's a great communication tool when you want video. Um, it has a couple of nice features. You can present your screen so individuals can see what's on your screen. And you can jump back and forth between using your camera and using what's on your screen to present a video to students or others. One word of caution as a teacher, if you are meeting with one student in a one-on-one -on -one situation, be sure to record your video conference. It just ensures the safety for you and the student involved. Just hate to see anything happen. You know, better safe than sorry, as they say. So there are two ways to create a, a meeting and get it going. I'm going to show you both ways. The first is I'm going to show you through the browser if you want to do a quick meeting. You open up your browser and you go to meet.google.com. When you're logged in with your Gmail account, you will have the chance to either join or start a meeting. So if somebody's already created a meeting and you want to join in on that, there'll be a code associated with that meeting that you can use to put in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a meeting. So I'm going to click on start a meeting and I'm going to put in test tutorial meeting and I'm going to click continue. So on this screen, it's going to pop up and you will actually see the video that you're using and the video camera that you're using. You can either use your webcam video or you can use external video through USB or some other more advanced platform, but you can also use your built-in um, camera and that'll work just fine. So if you wanna be able to change any settings, if you're using a different mic or a different camera, you'll see these three dots down on the bottom right. Click on those and you can go to settings and from here you can actually select what you want to use. I'm using a special audio interface called a Scarlett, but you'll see if I click on the drop down, you'll have the choice, chance to use your internal microphone or some other device. Let's get back to that again. And I can also tell it to do the same for speakers. I have my laptop output through that, but again, you can have it go through your internal speakers if you want. Or you can use a headphone jack. For video, if you have a USB uh, device connected, you can go through that. I have a special device going through USB called a Blackmagic. And if I do the drop down here, you'll see my FaceTime camera that I can also select and use that. You'll usually not have much of a choice in these two options of the resolution. So set those two things up and you'll be good to go. And from here, you can either join now if you want to show the uh, the video like what you're seeing on the left here or you can go into a presenter mode where it will show what's on your screen. So I'm going to do the join now and you'll see it gives you some different joining options that you can send out to people. So if you're scheduling a quick meeting I can copy that join code and email it to somebody or I can click down here and I can add people's Gmail account and it will send them an email with the code to join the meeting. So I'm going to close that out since we're not going to ask anybody to join. So now on this main screen, you'll see all the different options. Here it'll show you a list of all the presenters and everybody that's in the meeting as they join. And again, you can add people. It has a chat box, so you can chat and have messages with the people that are within it. If I click back off of it, it will go away and I can quickly access the chat or who's in it quickly. It also shows you a little video view screen of what you're seeing so when others are chatting you'll still see what you look like up in that top corner. You can turn captions on. This is a very cool feature. As you'll see it's automatically typing out exactly what I say and I've found through testing and what others have say it works pretty darn well. So I'm going to turn that back off. If you want to jump between presenting what's on your Mac and your camera, you'll see this little present now button. If I click that, it will give me the ability by clicking on the screen and I can click share. And now as I move around, people will see what I am doing on my screen. So what I'm going to do 
and that includes anything you open up pretty much anything you do on your computer those people in the presentation will see and you'll see over here there's a second window that shows where it shows that you're presenting so I'm gonna finish presenting and it's gonna jump back to my camera and that's what everybody would see now one of the most important features I think is if you click on these three dots record a meeting if you click on that it's gonna ask for your permission you'll go ahead and click OK and then when the meeting's done after about 10 minutes or so you will get an email could take longer for larger meetings but you will get an email that will give you a link to your Google Drive folder so you can click on that link and you can go actually view a recording of this meeting and you can share it with students or just have it for your own records you can go to full screen mode you can toggle captions here if you want to you can use a phone for audio I don't think for most people you want to do that you can click on settings which will open up that screen that I was showing you earlier where you can choose what video camera or what audio device you're using you can report a problem or go for help so you've got the present now down here that I already showed you got turn on captions where you can turn on the captions over here it gives you a little idea if you need to send info out to get more people to join in you can upload attachments if there's any attachments um, from the Google Calendar event that you created which I'm going to show that in just a moment you can do that there here you can turn off your microphone by clicking this icon the icon on the right you can turn off your camera so if you're doing something that people don't need to be seeing or you just for whatever reason you might want to just mute your camera or mute your audio you can go ahead and click on those to mute it and unmute it and then when you're done you can just click on the leave call and it will leave the meeting and then I can return to my home screen so that is the first way to start a meeting the way I believe most people will be using is by creating a calendar event so I'm gonna to go to my Google Calendar and I am gonna create a test meeting for April, or, yep, April 2nd so I'm gonna call it tutorial meeting I'm gonna set a certain time I'll just let the default stay there since this is just a test now for me because I have zoom on my laptop there's a way I can make it a zoom meeting not worrying about that under this add conferencing that's the key you want to click Add Conferencing and click Hangouts Meet. And you'll see now it creates a default and gives you all sorts of information. You can edit any of that if you would like. But I would just suggest leaving it as is. You can choose what calendar it posts to, just like you would for any other event. Now, to invite people to it, where they will actually get that link and it can show in their calendar or their email, over here on the right, you can invite guests so I can just start typing email addresses just using some of my test accounts I've got uh, so as I type names an invitation will go out to those people and it will invite them to the Google Meet so I'm gonna go ahead and save the Google Meet you can tell it to send invitations or not just because I'm not actually going to be using this I'll just tell it don't send but if you want to send invitations to all the students that you're going to have in that meeting you can click send now when I click on the meeting down here you'll see it in my calendar I'm going to click on the meeting and you'll see who's actually invited to the meeting and then you'll see this join hangouts meet if I want I can actually go ahead and click on that right now and it's going to take me right to that conference call where I can actually join in and start it now but you can wait till that date and time before you get it going. So that is how you create Google Meet using either through your browser and creating a quick meeting or using your Google Calendar. With all the recent happenings, they are definitely adding a lot of features really quickly and beefing up some of their features and finding little quirks that they're getting situated and fixed. So I know one of the big ones is students staying in meetings after the class has ended or the conference has ended one of the ways you can get around that is once you start the meeting people have to ask to join and you have to accept them if you make sure all of the students leave the conference call when you close out they shouldn't be able to get back in um, there is a lot of 
information out there right now saying this feature doesn't work as far as students being able to hang in the meeting after it ends and some saying this works and this works but I'm finding right now the best bet is just waiting till the end of the week or hopefully by the end of this week or next week they'll have that fixed so when you end the meeting no students can get back into it so not much we can do on that part right now you can try those different things out see if they work but if they don't just just do the best with what you can for right now and Google will have a fix out for that shortly. So that is it for the Google Meet tutorial. Don't forget to check out my site at adamontech.com where you can submit suggestions or follow up questions to these video tutorials. You can also leave a comment below or hit me up on twitter.com slash adamontech. So until next time, this is Adam on Tech signing off.